Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Community Bible Study for Thursday, July the 1st, 2021. We're, I'm doing the introduction from my office here in the Oaks Health Center, and then the Bible study itself in a few minutes will be in the library in our clubhouse. And you are always welcome if you would like to come at 11 o'clock on Mondays, except next week is a holiday. But other than that, uh, we'll do our Bible study live and we're welcome to have you. But certainly watch it uh, here on um, your channel three when you get a chance. We're reading about Genesis five through seven, and this is about the flood. So we're gonna study this week and next about Noah and the flood and the covenant with the Lord and uh, those kinds of things. It's interesting, um, the study guide, which you can you can ask and get a copy of if you'd like off of the resident app, um, talks about the genealogy of Adam, his son Seth, uh, several generations later, um, uh, has in his lineage a man named Noah, who has three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. The interesting thing is um, the flood story in the book of Genesis in our uh, Jewish and Christian heritage uh, has some similarities to uh, flood stories from Mesopotamia. Uh, the uh, Jewish people, of course, were uh, years later captured and spent time in Babylon, and the writing down of uh, the Torah, the first five books of, of the Bible, uh, were, was done after, we think after that time, when they came back in and reestablished the temple and wanted to give scrolls and writings for our study and for follow-up. So um, it is interesting. The, in the Mesopotamian Babylonian stories about the flood, the gods just create this flood and there's no really reason why. But one of the patterns in many of the Old Testament stories that distinguish the Jews, the Israelites, from those of their neighbors is that God acts with a purpose. And so here we have God's purpose, and that is to renew the earth after the wickedness that it was filled with. So uh, God's purpose has to do with covenant and law and behavior and how well people um, follow uh, the law and relate with one another. And it's not just, God isn't just capricious or um, uncaring or uh, just does things just for whatever reason that, that the gods of some of the, those other um, groups in the Middle East in that time often were attributed to being just very fickle in how they decided things. So that's one of the things that's behind this story of the flood. We will we'll take it up a little bit later and you'll hear the from the discussion at all. Thank you. Oh Lord, we do thank you that you are with us today. Guide our thoughts and our hearts. Draw us close to you and help us to learn from the story of Noah. Amen. Well, we remember Noah is a descendant of Seth, who was Adam and Eve's third son. And I guess it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight generations. And the Bible really jumps in terms of the story from that to the next. There's some other, a little bit earlier in the chapter, but this is really the uh, important part. Genesis 6, the title is Wickedness in the World. And verse 5, The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. 
So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I've created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now let's just stop now right there for a minute. I am sure that we all see the world and we read the Bible through our eyes. And I struggle when I read about God having some of the same emotions as we do. Mm -hmm. I created this and oh, now they're wicked, so I'm just gonna destroy them. Now, obviously, we're talking generations and we're talking time. But um, I'm like, the Lord regretted? Well, I, I guess, you know, he did regret the way things were turning out. Um, I think it's interesting, though, that we do know that human beings were created in the image of God. And sometimes I think we have to be careful that we don't create God in the image of <laughs> that we don't assume that God mm -hmm. thinks the way we do. But this is clearly God was troubled in seeing how human beings on the earth. And we don't have a lot of information about that. But actually these verses are really the sort of a little uh, summary introduction to a little bit more in a minute. But um, boy, Adam and Eve started out in the garden, a gorgeous place, things were great. They were disobedient. Cain and Abel, the brother mur murders his other brother. I mean, this is the first generation. Can't we get along a little bit better than that? Mm -hmm. And then we see the wickedness in the world. And um, I must say that um, our view that, yes, we are children of God, but we are also sinful and that human beings are capable of so many things is um, is so true and these are reminders. I, I saw on TV last night an interview, it was on 60 Minutes, and um, with the gentleman who was the last remaining uh, survivor of the attorneys who tried the Nuremberg trial after World oh. War II. Mm -hmm. And he talked about, they asked him questions about people. And, and anyway, he, he talked about the what he did and what he, the evil of what people did that he confronted. Um, and it's just a reminder of, and, and but his, his thing was, they were average people. He said, I didn't see evil in their eyes. I saw evil in their actions was basically what he said. And uh, he he um, pretty much said that, uh, you know, even good people are capable of things if they aren't careful about what happens. And um, I thought that was, that was pretty, pretty um, astute comment. So, um, verse 9, Noah builds a boat, and um, down here in a minute, we're going to read the, the um, dimensions, and I looked it up. Depending on how it describes it as cubits, mm -hmm. and depend, it's sort of, sort of your arm to your elbow, um, we think is what the cubit was. And, but there's some variation. But at the very least, the ark was about five to 600 feet long, about 90 to 100 feet wide, and about 60 feet tall. Um, and you look at that truck there, you can tell how, how small right. that is. Uh -huh. They said that is about the size of one of our aircraft carriers. Oh my God, what a huge boat. Unbelievable. Um, the size of that. 
and yet if you're going to put all those animals on right. it, and they got to be room. there for 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 more than a few days <coughs> you need some space and somebody has figured out that they think you know well how much food do you need and how much room for all the animals yeah. and and figured out that yes it was quite possible um for a large number of animals and people and food and stuff. And Wouldn't it be interesting to know how he got the animals? We're going to talk about oh, that. Okay. Let's read and we'll get. <laughs> so here is. Repeat, no, no, no. That's great. That's the perfect question because I discovered that it's. Oh, is it in the Bible? It's it's in here. Okay. Well, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time and he walked faithfully with God. And you know, if you put that on, on my tombstone, I think I would be honored that that yes. would be, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good description. And he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. And that's the description of what God said about the evil, was corrupt, and full of violence. And I'm thinking, boy, our violence today is just oh, scary. Wow. God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So um, they were not following God's ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I'm surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of, and the, most translations said gopher wood, but we actually don't know what that is. So many of them are saying cypress, and not because that was in the area. Um, make rooms in it, coat it with pitch inside and out, waterproof. This is how you are to build it. And it's pretty just it, exact. The ark is 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. I don't really see that in the picture, but anyway, that's what the description is. Um, put a door on the side of the ark and make a lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it everything on earth will perish. But, last time we talked about it, there was a but when God said, but I will do this. But I will establish my covenant with you. And I think that's the first time the word covenant appears. And you will enter the ark, you and your sons, and your wife, and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. To every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. So here, he, he says, you're going to bring them in the ark, but he says, they're going to come to you. So those sort of cartoonish child drawings that we give about them all lined up going two to two uh -huh. um, is based on this. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. And Noah did just as God commanded him. So somehow or other, God's going to tell the, cre the creatures, the two, two by two to come and um, I don't know if they lined up neatly. That's, that, may, right. that may be pushing it. <laughs> but it makes for a good uh, illustration, which you mm -hmm. see on the next page. Right. Um, but I want to stop and say, a lot of people have researched, okay, the historical here, where might the Ark have really been? Was this really accurate? All those kind of things. And also, we've discovered over the centuries that the Mesopotamians, basically later known as Babylon, Iraq today, um, also had several different flood stories. It, it's 
it's a, about one story, but there's different variations that I guess different groups of people in that area told. Um, and the most common one, the Epic of Gilgamesh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But one of the things that distinguishes their stories of a flood and the biblical one, in my mind, is their stories say that the gods created this flood and, it, and this is what happened. But it doesn't say anything about why. And our story in the Bible, God is acting not capriciously or, or um, fickle or unknowingly. God is not this, um, well, we've just got to try to figure out how to please the gods because we don't know what to do. God is like there was violence, corruption, evil, and this is the response. And so there's also then the message of, you know, eventually we get the law and we get all the um, instructions on how to live right and live proper with one another and with God. And um, that's, I think, so central to our, to our, our understanding of God that in, and in, those, in those old times, that distinguished the Israelites from the others is their view of God in a way that was um, that was purposeful and expected people to live well and not just that the gods were these kind of mysterious creatures yeah. that we have to sort of figure out how to live with um, we think that most of the scriptures in the Old Testament were put together and written down, at least the early parts, after the Israelites, years later, were dispersed and taken into Babylon and came back. So um, they would have heard, perhaps, the other story, too. Mm -hmm. But there is a distinction about the Lord God, our God, versus their view of the gods who... Um, was, weren't necessarily moral or ethical or understandable. And I think that that's, uh, there's some other things in the Bible that, that are sort of like that, where this is part of, you know, God does things because of God's purpose and expects his people to live according to that. Isn't this telling us too that if we sin and do wrong, we're going to be punished? There is punishment. There are consequences. Exactly. There are consequences. Even if God throws the butt, I'm going to still be with you, or I'm going to, but there are always consequences. I think so. So the, we go then to chapter 7, and I found this pretty colorful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, Noah and the flood, and here the animals are all lined up two by two. But here, there's a retelling of some of this, and it, it's, they're not all two by two. The Lord then said to Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I found you righteous in this generation. And here it says, take with you seven pairs of every kind of clean animal, a male and its mate, one pair of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven pairs of every bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. So um, I had forgotten about that. Hmm. Um, so the the animal now at this point they have it told we don't have a record of what's clean animals and unclean animals, hmm. but that comes later when we when we have the um, the law. But um, uh, that's part of the instructions to Noah. So there are some that you have more than just two pairs or a pair. You have seven pairs. Verse seven, four, seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. So I don't know if it took seven days for them all to get in or if they were all 
how quickly they all got in, but mm -hmm. there were seven more days before the rain started coming. Um, and Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. And that really is maybe the lesson of the whole thing. Um, I know, oh, who was the comedian? Bill Cosby, who used to do a thing about Noah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, God. You know, he's building this boat. There is no water. <laughs> yeah. You're doing what? And it's, and when you think about it, mm -hmm. Noah did what he was commanded and asked to do, well, even though it made no sense except in the context of what God had. And I suspect people made fun of him. Oh, I'm I mean, sure. Oh, I'm sure they you think you're going to get this thing in the water? <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure he was a laughing stock of whatever yeah. the land, whatever the community was that there was people around him. He probably asked a lot of questions. He probably did. Oh, I bet he did. I bet, I bet it would be interesting to know all of Noah's conversation with God. <laughs> what about this? What about mm -hmm. this? How do I do this? Right. Are you crazy? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? So verse six, Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth. And Noah and his sons and wife and his son's wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Pairs of clean and unclean animals, of birds and all creatures that move along the ground, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark as God had commanded Noah. So they came as God directed them. And after the seven days, the flood waters came on the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth the water from under the earth, and the floodgates of the heavens were open, and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Jeff, Jepheth, along with his wife and their wives, entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female, God commanded as God commanded Noah. And then the Lord shut him in. He closed the, the door um, to the side of the ark. For 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. As the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased gently on the earth and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly, meaning just higher and higher, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits, uh, 30 feet, I think that's what about what that is. Every living thing that moved on the earth, per on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, and all the creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for 150 days. Then we're gonna stop the reading there. This talks about a worldwide flood. We don't have, according to archeologists and geologists and all those people, we don't see in that record a worldwide flood, but there is a record of a huge flood in the Black Sea area, which would be adjacent to Turkey in that area, about 7,500 years ago. And um, I think trying to, to always match up what we know scientifically and what we see in the Bible, you know, I mean, 
we don't know everything yeah. and we can't find everything. But the interesting thing was that there was a huge deluge and people had to abandon villages and things like that along the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. And they have found under the, uh, under the Black Sea using uh, modern instruments and submarines or whatever they use, um, where this happened quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting that there's at least something like this yeah, there is a record of in, or we've discovered um, some of that. And I don't know, I don't, wouldn't have a problem if, I mean, this is a story of these people in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. This really says nothing about China or India or Australia or, or, the, or America. So well, it, was, it was worldwide to them. It was irregardless. Them world. It was ir irregardless. Um, um, and I don't need to have to prove those things. No. But, man, that must have been some experience. And just it's just miracle after miracle, too. Think about the fact of all those animals seem to get along. Uh, yes. Yeah. Staying in the same quarters. It, yeah. Yes. Yeah, close quarters. Yeah. I oh, imagine. oh, I know. I mean, I don't know how the uh, oops, uh, there go those birds because mm -hmm. the alligators got them. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we see that around here where little mm -hmm. ducklings disappear. Or... Right, there's the monkey swinging from the right. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty <much> right. <laughs> and, and if you see on there, there's Noah with his face. Just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's tearing his hair out, I guess. I don't know. What am I doing? Uh, well, yeah. Well, it looks like the beavers have chewed out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what that is. Oh, he's, oh, yeah, he's worried. They have to go. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I miss, I didn't see that part. Oh, dear. All of the things. Ah, something. But isn't that something? God instructed the animals mm -hmm. and they came to know yeah and um, I had missed that that was actually what was said here uh, and I was because how in the world is he going to go out and gather up all but you know uh, yeah he was pretty tired after just building the boat I think <laughs> that's so. what I figured I would think so what a huge what a huge project well, thank you for joining us for our Bible study on the flood, the beginning of the story of Noah. We will be taking a break on Monday, July 5th for the holiday, Independence Day holiday, and we'll resume then on July the 12th. Uh, well, that's anyway that next week, and that will be uh, about the rest of the story of Noah. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good week.